testing. Testing our statics. Testing. Testing our statics. Get this uh, testing. Testing our statics. Get this uh, testing. Testing our. And let's uh, see now. Is it in the matter? For some reason, I, I I set up a noise gate for the microphone to reduce the static, but um, the settings didn't seem to save. Ah, I think we're good now. Okay, let's try this. Um, <clears throat> if you're already here, welcome to Cutfather's uh, stream. We're going to be playing some uh, Ancient Domains of Mystery. If I recall, I have a uh, Barbarian that I started playing. That we'll uh, see see how we can do it. There he is. Let's have a quick, quick look at him. Oh, also, first let's check the settings here. I think the volume is too loud again. There. Check how that sounds on the stream. So yeah, uh, this is a human barbarian. Very standard. Uh, good strength and toughness. He doesn't have literacy, of course. Uh, Standard starting gear still. Human barbarians start with Amulet of Luck, I noticed, which is a nice bonus at the start of the game. We're in the Unremarkable Dungeon, I think it's called. See if we uh, can make our way to that uh, village in the mountains. See how that goes. Hmm. Food preservation is nice. Uh, dodge. Herbalism, I think. And for the last point, we will take more dodge. Yes. Yep. This will work. Also, plus uh, movement is getting swifter. A little bit more speed. I think. So yeah, if this is your first time uh, watching me play Adon, uh, you should know I am uh, not a professional <laughs> at this game. I have only beat the game once in a very old version of the game, and even that was with uh, saves coming, so... Still uh, pursuing that legit victory in this game. Playing the Adon Deluxe on Steam version. On this version, I have yet to uh, defeat the Tower of Eternal Flame, I think. <laughs> I always uh, end up going there before I uh, farm ready and dying. 
Let's see if we can not do that this time. If we live that far. More athletics. Ooh, nice roll. Hmm, herbalism, sure. Um Stealth. And some herbalism. Oh, what talents do we want? I think I uh I took the faster healing and uh the slightly faster movement, and then I think I started building toughness perks, so we'll uh, take uh, tough skin plus protection value. Might uh, go to Berserker or um, stay with a two-hander this character. So if I'm not going to use a shield, we definitely would benefit from having some uh, talents that improve the tough toughness a little bit. See what we have. We looted. Mm. Always risky to equip identify gear when you don't have literacy, so you can't identify or you can't uncurse with scrolls. Adamantum small shield. Some Drakish Skurgari, those are nice. Lots of food. Definitely good on the food situation currently. Let's see, leather girdle. Take that too. Wait, perk. First aid. So 
much XP from this uh, vault room thingy. Oh, damn. Ow! Hmm, <laughs> these gnolls are packing a punch. These are large gnolls. They tend to be uh, quite okay equipped and do uh, decent damage for their level, of course. Oh, strength plus. Mm, that's bad. Ah, ouch. I think we need to do a retreat here. Hmm. I'm carrying way too much junk. Let us at least equip the studded leather. That should on average have three protection values, so that would increase our survival odds a bit. This one only has plus two. And it's cursed. Drat. Fine cloak. Cloak of Invisibility, ooh! Oh, or the... What's the weapon situation here? Should equip that spear. Check that out. 14 damage, plus 1 defense. That is, that is good. That's really good. Plus 5 defensive value shield. And shit, it's gone to peace. That is why you don't want to just randomly equip stuff. This is horrible. Minus 15 hit chance with melee and ranged. Though it does give some nice defense. It's still a shitty thing to have equipped. Like now, I have minus 6 hit chance if I fight in a normal stance. Please. Like, <laughs> in Berserk stance, plus two hit chance. It's no bueno. A spider corpse. Oh, that's tempting to eat for the poison resistance. I think we have to try to get it, even though I'm very low health, and if I don't get the resistance and I get poisoned, we're in trouble. Your throat feels very rough and your stomach burns. That is the getting resistance message. So I think yeah, I think we got lucky there. Ooh. Actually hit with the sling. Oh dear. Losing blood. Still poisoned. And the caveman hits pretty hard. Ah, got it. Ouch. Ouch. <coughs> Ouch. Whee. Hmm. We need to... Uh, let's see, how deep are we? Oh, we're only on floor one. Yeah. It's not reasonable to lug all this stuff around. Those thick furs might have good defensive value as well, so we'll keep those. 
Two wooden shields, one of those is probably cursed if I know my luck. But what we really need is more protection value. This adamantium shield has five defensive, which is nice. It helps you deflect blows, but it doesn't reduce any damage taken. So I will risk equipping more shields and see what if we get a lucky rolled one. This one's plus one. Oh, that was a mithril shield. Plus five and a plus one protection. Okay, I think we'll we'll use that one. And if that wouldn't, uh, the last one is cursed and has poor stats, we're screwed, so let's not do that. Uh, these. That adamantium shield is probably worth a good bit of money, so we'll keep that with us. Drop the cloak. Hand axe. Typically poor damage on those. Battle axe. Or battle axes, those are most likely just normal stated ones. Can drop those. Two-handed weapons. I want to. I want to keep those. If they if they are good rolled with like a nice uh, prefix or suffix on them, they could be awesome for us. So we keep those. Don't have any water potions. Could. Uh, Dip, uh, dip the gauntlets in a random water uh, bottle if we find one and hope for uncursing. We need ammunition. There. Good hit. Throwing your stuff at me. Let's uh, test, check out the Skurgaris. Oh, hit. And we're so low on hit points. If anytime you take damage, it's a good idea to go switch stance to defensive, so we get a huge buff to avoiding taking hits, and then try to apply first aid cover all or most of the damage. Right there, took a hit, switch defensive, apply first aid. And then I'm switching back to Berserker, <laughs> which I normally wouldn't do when we're so uh, in such a low dire state. But with those gauntlets of peace we can't hit anything unless we do. Oh damn! Old chieftain. Oh, got a hit. He hit us twice. Oh, yes. And hit yet again. And again. Hit there. They uh, do damage these nulls. Man, we have 11 protection value now. Should be able to not take all that much of the beating at this level, but that is not the case. Two hits again to the face. Let's uh, randomly drink some potions and see what happens. <laughs> I learned a spell. Strength of Atlas. 19 power points to cast, but I only have 9 memorized, so that is one cast of Strength of Atlas and then I'll forget it. Let's try... Violet Potion. Feel good about your toughness level, so that was potential toughness potion.
should do is uh, try a prayer to get a full heal off. <laughs> then again, I might survive without it, so it would be a shame to waste the piety if it's not needed. And so I always get greedy and try to survive without uh, using a prayer. And then I typically lose a character because I got greedy. Yes. of spiders anymore since we ate a corpse. We should have uh, at least one source of uh, poison resistance now. So if we get poisoned we can shake it off pretty easily. This blazer beast is going to be troublesome to kill at the least, since I uh, we have that massive penalty to hit chance, and this blazer beasts have incredible defensive value. I might not be able to hit it at all. One speed for reduced to another is bad news. Let's actually back up a bit. Got rid of the slow now. Hit it. armor and poison this. These have quite potent poison, so this might actually be bad news. Another level up. That's good. Mm. Just going to increase randomly some skills here with high jump by rolls. Talent. I'm actually considering taking aggressive just for the plus one hit chance because it is so uh, so low right now. Fine, we'll do it. And we're out of ammo. Can we throw? We can throw some more Skurgari. Hit! Ow! Ow! This might take a while. <laughs> Plus four hits versus the Displacer Beast. Yay! that one lucky hit. There we go! Giant. Ow! 
now. Okay. 17 hit points. Uh, can risk a bit more. A bow. Excellent. We need, need one of those. Brother, oh, damn, great use. Ah, we killed it in one throw, excellent. Those brown, those worm enemies can be really dangerous because they uh, multiply over time. So if they spawn somewhere on the level and are left alone for a good time, before you know it, half the level can be filled with those freaking worms. But not today. somewhere in this room. You can tell from all these uh, vipers. Some creature fell into it and then a bunch of uh, vipers leap out of it. Ah, there's the pit trap. this huge bat. I tend to pick up all the corpses I see, because it provides uh, passive training for uh, the prude, uh, prude, food uh, preservation skill, which is very useful. Oh dear. Ghost. They're not too dangerous, but if they manage to hit you, you get aged unnaturally. Many undead have that power. Some of the stronger ones can uh, age you to death in a, in a hit, hit or two. <laughs> if you're not playing the right race. Uh, different races have different lifespans. So for example, if you play a, an elf, they live... Uh, Hundreds and thousands of years in some cases, so if they get aged, it doesn't really bother them at all. But if you're playing a troll, they have extremely short lifespans, and uh, getting hit just once can kill them. Very bad. We found some very nice bracers there, plus four toughness. Good. Twenty-four stones short sword. Mm, it's probably adamantum, which is not good enough stat-wise to equip. But we should uh, bring it with us and check it out at some point. Would it be a bad idea to let that breathe on us and hope it destroys the gauntlets? It would probably <laughs> destroy everything else before it though, knowing my luck. Do we have a... Uh, wait, we have a... Um, I think we have a fireproof blanket.
don't we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Alright, let's let's uh, let's give it a bash. Just unequip everything else and let it breathe. Come on. Thick furs are consumed by the flames. Ah, uh, that's not good. That was in my backpack and it should be protected. No! <laughs> we lost the bracers of toughness. But we got rid of the cursed uh, chest armor at least. Ah! Not good to lose the. Not good at all to lose those bracers. There we have a nasty creature coming. We need to equip some Garion. I would really like to get rid of those <laughs> contests because they are so very, very bad for <laughs> for this guy. All he has to do to rely on is hitting shit and those contests just ruin everything. This doesn't seem to be working out. That's unfortunate. I think we have to just kill that... Uh, kill that lizard and move on. So far we are at least alive. Wouldn't say so far so good because of these things. Never equip shit if you miss <laughs> have means to uncurse them. It is so such a bad idea. <laughs> um I'll take a, a two minutes break. I have some coffee already, which I think I need, so we'll be uh, right over. There's my lovely FK picture. Ah, oh, okay, perfect.
Okie dokie. We should be back now. Back in the... Back in business. And a sip of this awesome cof coffee. Good, that's the stuff. Right, um... I need to get rid of my strain status. All these, and what don't we need? Great Axe and Halberd. I'm carrying so much food. If I leave all the food here, I will just forget about it. If I do remember it though. I've got rid of strain, so that helps our hit chance slightly. Which we need uh, direly because of those freaking gauntlets. Yes. Carrying crawler corpse. It seems like a very bad idea to eat. We'll just leave it. Although, can I carry it? That gives us burdened again. We'll just drop it. I was thinking to bring it with me to train food preservation, but nah. Yeah, this is better. Now we can actually hit things without being in Berserk stance. Which is important because you don't get shield training can't deflect blows, I think, if you're in Berserk Sands. Being a melee character, you definitely want to train your shield blocking skills when you can. We have a... Yeah, here's the weapon and shield uh, skills page. You can see I have trained pole arms, which is the spear I'm using now, and my two-handed weapons, which is from the two-handed sword I started with. Also some sling training, boomerangs got raised, and the shield is at skill zero. You need to block 11 times to raise it. Each uh, level it goes up, it provides some defensive value. That's how that works. I think we'll uh, ditch the Cloak of Invisibility for now. For the simple reason that when you are invisible, you eat... or, or you, your satiation uh, drops much more rapidly. But if you're invisible, you get hungry faster, which is bad. There we see in the status text a uh, deflect attack of the Goblin Chieftain. That is a successful shield block, and that should give one mark towards increasing the shield skill. So that's how it works. Uh, shield deflect uh, triggers. If uh, the attack roll lands on uh, somewhere between your natural defensive value and the bonus provided by your shield. So if you want to train shields, easily, what you want is a high defensive value shield. So there's a good chance that that attack roll lands in, in the defensive value range of the shield. Take 
taking a few hits here and there, even in normal stance, but uh, nah, it's, it's not too bad. We have a very good toughness, which gives us a shit ton of hit points, 114, that is very good. And we have a 9 protection value, which is okay. It could be better if we didn't get the uh, studded leather armor burned away by the fire lizard. Then again, that armor was cursed, and it had only plus two protection value, so it wasn't really a great armor to begin with. So it's for the better to get rid of it. Athletics and dodge skill, sure. Ah, there we go! Prove your skill in the shield group to level 1. So now we get plus 2 DV. Anytime we have a shield equipped. leader should be a problem for our strong barbarian it's a pit here is a secret room you can tell because of the <laughs> corridor on the other side of it oh damn green slime those are bad If you swing a weapon at them, they will corrode it, and reduce the damage the weapon does. Which you want to avoid at all costs. You sense a certain tension. There is a room filled with nasties somewhere here. Nice, and cursed metal cap. This one protection will take that happily. No! The door was trapped. Hidden runes exploded and our hat and awesome sling got destroyed. I would really like to keep that sling for a while longer. Oh no, something hit us. There is an invisible guy here. To our right, we will swing in its direction and hope we hit it. Come on. There. I will uh, enter the command for the monster memory. Type in invisible stalker and see if that is indeed what we killed. Yeah, we have killed one invisible stalker. They're not too dangerous, but uh, <laughs> being invisible yeah, can be quite annoying. And the statue here. Let's see what it is. It appears to be a fair skinned queen. The hair of rose gold. I'm sunburned. I got stunned. Did I kick the statue? Yes. Nothing happened. I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> uh, those uh, statues uh, are a bit like uh, uh, pools. They can have kind of like any random effect, or they might not have any effect at all. And they have different ways of triggering them. Some, some give some kind of effect by stepping onto the uh, tile. Others need to be activated in some other way, such as kicking it. What I could do is visit the um, Cardia wiki and uh, study the statue page there and try to, try to discern what type of statue it is and what kind of effect it gives, but nah. Let's not do that. 
The danger room was full of rats. <laughs> Could be a lot worse. And it's free. She. Uh, oh, I think thick first. Excellent. Twenty-two stones weight saber. That's probably quite good. And the ring. Let's put it all on. Just two protection value thick first. That's a typical stat one. I am curious about that saber. Damage, not bad. Let's check the mithril sword as well. Nine damage on that. Not too, not too great. I think we'll stick with the spear. Should eat something. Poison is always fun, yes. Uh, burden 2194 stones, and we are at 2375. So, if I lose 200 stones of weight, we get rid of burdened, which would be good. 200 stones, though. Uh, Oh, we can get rid of some quarrels. Don't think I will be using crossbows all that much. Throwing clubs, typically not that great. And a uh, large ration. That should put us well under. Good. Down we go. Oops, a blinding trap. Oh, shit! See what we have inside the room here. A monster swordsman. That is really bad news. If we get unlucky, it can disarm us and the weapon will fly in one random direction. If we get really unlucky then, it might fly to the north and into the danger room. Then we're in trouble. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, damn, there is a cave line in the room as well. If at all possible, you want to not uh, arm cat type monsters on this game. Let's see if we can uh, get rid of it somehow. Oh! That'll work! We killed a giant rat, it left the corpse, and... Give. Shit. <laughs> Bad spot right now. Uh, what we can do is give the the giant rat to a cave line, and it will. Uh... Oh, they're killing the giant for us. How nice. Right, so take advantage of that. Did I finish my sentence? If you give a giant rat to a cat, it might get tamed. So what might happen, yes. Here he comes. Okay, let's try this. Giant rat corpse. It ate it, and it's still angry. 
Come on. That's unfair. That is uncool. Maybe this rat will drop a corpse. Oh, run away. Slap, try and drop. Oh shit. A critical hit from that dark orc. Ooh, I found a sling. Butcher. Those are dangerous. Ow. And there comes the cave line again. Hmm. Wonder if we can try to trap it inside the room here. Maybe, maybe, come on. No. An ant? Oh, don't tell me there is an ant level. This is definitely an odd level. Oh dear. There's the stairs down. It's good to know. is this thing anyway average speed of 98 hey we're out running it maybe if we're lucky we can get rid of it just by running away oh dear yeah let's close the door so we, the cave line can't get to us Killing all these ants. This is going to take a while. Good. Aunt Queen is dead. Once the ant queen has uh, crawled out of the ant hole, uh, the ants stop spawning. There's the ant hole here, crumbled hole in the ground. This is where they all came from. Hmm, a melon. Eat it. Whole bunch of rocks. Nice. Yeah, check that sling we found. Is it any good? It's plus one, plus one. Not cursed. Good. Get some rocks. Get rid of some of the smaller stacks. We don't need to carry this one and two stacks of ammo. They're just annoying to have to cycle through on the reloading. Like so. That is a Chaos Plague Bearer. It suddenly looks powerful, so it just killed something. Oh, it is dead. Now, if anyone is really knowledgeable about the game who is watching the stream right now, can you tell me why giving a giant rat to that cave line didn't tame it? Because that still confuzzles me quite a bit. 
That has worked out very well for me before. I think it's the the cave tiger that will only eat uh, other types of meat, like fish meat or fresh meat or raw meat, even. But I thought like uh, cave lion should be able to be tamed with a giant rat. Except it did not care at all. Danger room animals cannot be tamed. All right. Yeah, it was a danger room animal. Well, that would explain it. Thanks. Thanks a bunch, man. Speaking of danger rooms, hello. Oh yeah, I know with the uh, with the music you may often have to try quite a while before you can tame something. Isn't it um, uh, summoned animals that you can't tame either, but you can just uh, lower their uh, aggressiveness for a turn or two if you play music for them, but they will eventually become hostile again, if I recall. First aid, um, herbalism, sure. I need help. I, I think I might have a hoarding problem on this game where I just can't resist picking up anything I see. Statue of a spear wielding nomad. The hair painted blue. Kick it? Nothing. <laughs> ah, it didn't seem to do anything. Um, hi! Old Disu. Yes, this is a Steam Deluxe um, version of Adon. The tile graphics. I have uh, modified it slightly uh, in the options here. If you look at uh, the graphical mode and minimap, you can change the tile size. I increased it slightly. And also, I changed the renderer. I can find a renderer somewhere. Renderer, yeah. I changed that to OpenGL. Uh, by default, it uses SDL2 renderer, which doesn't uh, smooth out the tiles in any way, but uh, OpenGL1 makes them look a little bit uh, smoother. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a traditional 
a roguelike without the um, dumbing down or uh, yeah friendliness <laughs> that you often see in the modern games. <laughs> Have you played this game? I don't. If you haven't uh, checked it out, uh, this game is free. If you visit the, the website adom, adom.de, you can download the free version of it, which yeah, I think it has the tiles, but it uh, doesn't have um, some of the fe other features of the uh, Steam Deluxe Edition. Such as um, weekly challenge mode, crowd mode, which is kind of broken right now anyway, and uh, the ghosts, which are kind of annoying to begin with. But yeah, it's the full game on Steam as well. On Steam as well, I said, but I meant the, the free version from the site. Yeah. High strength with do decent melee damage. Should be able to bring it down. Just gonna berserk to maximize our damage. Maybe even prime some mighty blows for double damage. Except I'm not hitting. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Killed it in one hit with a double uh, mighty blow. always forget about the class abilities on this game. So that was a rare uh, <laughs> rare moment where it actually got used. Down we go. Floor 7. I think we're getting close to the dungeon exit which leads into the mountain village now. Triggered a stone block trap. Oh, she got angry. Now oh, she's dead. More herbs. Typically on this game, when you find herbs, you don't want to just pick them all up because they uh, regrow in certain patterns and there are a number of pat uh, patterns which are considered stable, which will kind of reproduce uh, herbs. But I haven't really studied, looked into how that actually works, <laughs> and I typically end up just picking up everything, for forgetting about them. Gargantuan Rat Corpse. Shall bring it with me in case of uh, cave tigers. Oh, clay statue. Those aren't too bad. Alrighty, floor is clear. Just have to get up for a second here and refill my coffee and be right back.
And we're back. Um, so yeah, if you're watching this and you haven't played a DOM or read much about it before, this is um, a very old game by now. It was uh, it started development and got its first versions in the late 90s. So it's been around for a while. And it's considered by many... Uh, many think it is the best roguelike, but it is at least widely agreed that it's one of the best roguelikes of the classic type. Karmic Lizard. But yeah, we're not going to get into the whole debate of which is the best one. It's okay to have your own favorite. But this is mine. Kar karmic creatures like this lizard here uh, are easily identified by their uh, changing colors. They have one very important attribute uh, in that you cannot attack them in melee. Because if you do, you get cursed and doomed. And being cursed and doomed is perhaps the worst thing that can happen to your character, unless it's a very, very strong character. Because it drastically increases the chance of uh, bad rolls or monsters getting lucky, critting you, punching through your armor, that kind of stuff. So if you get cursed, doomed, or both, <laughs> that uh, typically spells the beginning of the end of a character. Unless they can get rid of it somehow. Wonder if we shall eat the Dark Elven Archer Corpse. Yes, it will poison me, but I think some Dark Elves can give like uh, toughness and other stats if we eat them. So um, let's check it out. We have 22 strength, 15 dex, 22 toughness. Let's eat it. 16 decks. I think we got plus 1 dexterity now from eating the, <laughs> the Dark Elf. Oh! Tarantula hit us. We have uh, poison resistance, so it's not too bad. Otherwise it would be very bad because uh, Tarantulas have very, very potent poison. fighting each other. Oh, a ring. Is it the precious? Why did I loot that axe? I don't need it. Crude battle axe. Ah, it's heavy. Probably doesn't have better damage than what I have. Let's leave it behind. Show some discipline for once. <laughs> back. A rat! <laughs> oh shit, those are dangerous. Ogre mages. This one is very luckily friendly to us. Uh, ogre magi, like this one, can turn invisible and cast uh, frost bolts, which deal pretty heavy damage. And, yeah, if you run into one and you're not, not prepared, those are one of the monsters that can very quickly <laughs> kill you. But hey! We actually made it through the Unremarkable Dungeon. The reward for surviving this trip is uh, getting to the city here which has a guaranteed shop, and if you are going for one of the ultra endings of the game, there is an NPC here which you need to do, um, I think it's five 
quests for. Hello, Ogre Guardian. It's a very unique monster which only appears in this city. <laughs> Here is a secret room. Pretty sure. There we are. Blue potion. And here is an exit, which uh, creates a shortcut to get back to the Dracalor chain without having to go through the whole um, unremark unremarkable dungeon again. That's a hostile farmer. Why is he angry with me? I don't know, but we'll kill it. <laughs> locked rooms. This town could potentially be used as a place to store items because of the doors here, which you can lock manually if needed, and then nothing can get to your dropped items. Ah, here's the shop. I'm going to free action. Food, quarrels of jelly slaying. Mimic! Kill it! Sneaky. I think we'll buy the carriages. Uh, anything else we want to buy? Cloak of protection. Do I have money for that? Yes, I do. Yes, we will buy a cloak of protection easily. Yes, please. And a potion of water. Okay, pay for all of this. On the cloak. And see if, if we can sell some things. When you get to a shop in this game, it is one of the places where you can um, vendor identify items. Uh, because you can get a very good idea of how good an item is if you offer to sell it to the merchant and look at what kind of price he offers you for it. So we're gonna do that right now. I have an identified metal cap plus one, which he will give me 72 gold for. Now if we offer the other, hat, the other headgear we have for sale, you can see that this hat is offered only 12 gold for, so it is for sure worse than the metal cap, so we can sell it. The other cap is 24 gold, we'll sell that too. The horned helmet is worth more. So, I'm gonna put that on. As we saw, it gives a slightly better defenses than the metal cap. Let's do the same with the necklaces. 240 for Amulet of Luck. I'm not a free action, I definitely want to hang on to. So those are very good. In certain situations, golden amulet gives 12 gold. That is probably a piece of shit necklace that we can get rid of. Lead amulet, 216. That's probably quite good. We can try to equip ID it. No. Uh, rings and amulets. You can um, sometimes get lucky when you equip them and see what they are. If they are um, a stat-changing item, like a, a necklace of uh, protection or defense that gives uh, defense increases, then you will see what it is when you put it on. Otherwise, you need to uh, identify it otherwise in other means, such as a scroll of identification. Wait a second. Screw that turn. 48 gold for this girdle. It's a pretty good one. And the other one is only 36, so we'll sell that. And for the weapons. 
the best weapon we have is the adamantium spear. So we'll check the price on that. 228 gold for that. Now we can drop all the other weapons. I think I want to keep the adamantium saber as a backup weapon. And I think we want to keep a pickaxe, because those might be ne needed. 144 for crystal dagger, not too great. Sell it. There. Some of the single stack ammo. Don't need a whistle, do we? I think we'll keep all the rings, wands, potions, scrolls. Tempting to keep them in case we learn literacy at some point. We have a herbalism skill, so we identify some of the herbs we picked up earlier. Curaria mancox is a good herb, it can cure poison and disease for us. Um, but I have poison resistance and disease is quite rare to get, so I don't see that much use in carrying them around. I'll sell them. Stomosemtia herb is very dangerous to eat, it empties your stomach completely, putting you at starvation. Demon Daisy has a negative thingy. Moss patches of Marillion are awesome. If you bless them and eat them, they can train your dexterity and toughness, I think it is. So, finding those is very good. Sell all the things. Really attack Gub by the old crone? Nah. Don't think we will. My coming has been foretold. Mature and we'll talk. Oh, hungry. Shall we eat the big rat? Oh, use it. Hmm. Maybe we shall swim into here and talk to the talk to the person here. Hmm. Tempting, tempting. Before we do so, we need to unequip all the Uh, all the items that can rust in water. Rings, I think possibly wands, those kinds of weapons and armor, scrolls definitely. Can't bring those into water. Like so. And swim. Talk to the oracle, the sword might be heavier than the sword. That's not very useful. That's all she has to say. Ah, well. Pick all the things up again. These cursed gauntlets of peace, peace are really starting to annoy me. <laughs> playing, a, playing a barbarian, so hitting things is kind of all I do. Minus 15 hit is uh, not not great. I need to find some holy water or and uncurse those gauntlets or something.
crumbling dungeon entry. That's something we might explore at some point. Boring cave entrance. This is a cave that contains the Assassin's Guild, which I have no business going to. Ah! to do the quest here, because I still haven't learned healing, and we're definitely going to need healing. Uh, I think we're, in general, really good on food, so yeah. Um, those mosses cannot increase uh, potentials, can they? Don't think they do. I think, yeah. I think we'll need to uh, find some means to increase the dex potential before using the losses. Dungeon is really low level for us now. But we need to get to the bottom of it and find the carpenter. Rescue him. And hopefully learn a very useful skill called healing in the process. Floor four. There should be a healer somewhere on this floor that we need to talk to. Oh, zombie room. trap on the ground there. Let's be a bit careful with that one. Scale mail. Nice. There's the healer. We kill the orc first. Talk to the healer. Would you like to learn or to be healed? I want to learn. Before I'll teach you, you need to prove that you are able to exert mercy. We shall. To remember where on the floor that, that healer was because we need to run back to it with a very angry carpenter in tow to finish our quest here.
blessed potions of courage. Uh, I can train. Oh, hello! What is this? This is a, this is a blink dog. Um, blessed courage potions train perception, which is very useful. Also, this blink dog is a very nice find. They can, um, when they're killed, they can drop a corpse. And when eaten, the corpse will give you teleport control. Which is uh, rather really nice to have. To also call for help at some point. Hopefully. There we go, summon some help. If you don't have teleport control, you want to let it summon help. Um, so, it, so you get more blink dogs to kill. And a bigger chance of getting the corpse. For the bonus. Like this. Now, with a bit of luck, might get a corpse. There's a blink dog corpse. Success. Should eat it. Another one. Ah, oh, let's eat the other one too. <laughs> so now. Since we have a uh, teleport control, that's a passive ability that whenever uh, my character gets teleported, I can choose which time to move to, which is extremely useful. Like uh, as an escape mechanism, for example, if you need to get away, you can sap yourself with a wand or trigger a teleport trap and just get to wherever you need to go. That's good. Also, double up on the teleport control by eating uh, pixies, which can those corpses can give you teleportitis, so your character will start randomly te teleporting every every few turns. It's kind of neat. If you don't have teleport control, though, it can be <laughs> extremely annoying. Pretty decent uh, defensive armor. Let's put it on. Plus 5 PV, it's not cursed. Good. Let's get rid of the, rid of the other ones then. Good. Uh, 17 protection value now. That puts us in uh, a pretty good position, actually, to be able to kill some of the some of the tougher creatures we might find at this level. Should be enough to tackle the pyramid, which we'll get to pretty soon as well. Where is that carpenter? Oh shit. Those are bad. Poker jellies, um, as older types of jellies, if you melee attack them, they can destroy your weapons, reduce their stats. And they also multiply quite quickly. You can end up in a very bad situation if you let them multiply in a place that you need to get past. And if you don't have very good range damage, they might be very, very tricky to get past. Right. 
So what we're doing now, uh, we found this uh, carpenter guy, which is the guy we're rescuing. We could just kill him to finish the quest, but we want to get like a bonus objective here and lead the carpenter back to the healer on floor 4. And if we do so, the healer will teach us the healing skill, which is extremely good. Healer should be in the next room here now. There he is. Come on. Yep, so the healer touched the carpenter and removed his madness. And now he uh, becomes peaceful and leaves back for down. We'll talk to the healer. If we wish to learn, he will teach us the art of healing. All is good in the world. That guy is uh, pretty much Jesus. Yes, if you don't have, if your character doesn't start with a healing skill, you need to either be chaotic and uh, kill him as a quest, or do what I just did, pretty much to learn the healing skill. And having healing is vital. Level are we? Level 11. Uh, when we reach level 13, I think it is, uh, we will find a scroll that, when read, tells us that we are invited to a pyramid to talk to a mummy lord. Which is a nice quest to do. You don't need to have the actual reading skill to do the quest either. You can just uh, go there at level 13. Uh, the pyramid is a timed quest, kind of, in that you can only enter it when your character is between level uh, 13 and 16, I think it is. So if your character gets higher than that, like level 17 or 18, then the pyramid is closed off forever and you can't go there. that to a hundred. Athletics gives some uh, passive uh, stat increases, which can be very useful, like strength and toughness, dexterity, charisma, that kind of thing. It also gives a speed bonus to your character, which is very useful. Hoarding tendencies, I think that's a good call. So yeah, um, the pyramids. It's an optional thing to do. So you can just ignore it completely. If you feel that your character is too weak to survive there, or you just don't need the items there. There's no need to go there. But, uh, the mummy lord dealt with can provide you with two artifacts. Um, one of them at least is very useful and the other one can be situationally pretty good as well. So it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to go and do, the, do it. Our way back to the entrance. There we are. Back 
to the village, finish the quest. No, we don't want to attack the elder, we want to talk. He saved Eryx. You deserve our gratitude. Uh, we talk to the human shopkeeper and he will adjust his prices for you. Nice. Now try to find the source of all this chaos stuff. The origin of this great evil might lie in an ancient dungeon in the western central part of the mountains. Look for a foreboding place. We shall. Also, since we saved the carpenter, we can talk with him and he uh, will be willing to teach us the art of building bridges. So he shall, we shall spend some time training with him, like this. And we learned a new skill, bridge building. Building bridges is extremely tedious and yeah, in most cases you just ignore the skill. <laughs> there are other ways of crossing bodies of water than building bridges. Mm. How's the food situation? Ah, let's buy some more food. Should do. Twelve. Okay, what else do we do? Could talk to the sheriff and get a quest to kill a bandit lord, but I don't really want to. This guy is like supposed to be neutral. Uh, if we finish that quest, that's considered lawful, so it might tip our alignment in favor of lawful. And. We were already a bit lawful by uh, saving the carpenter to learn the healing skill. If you look at the top of the screen, you see an N+. That means uh, my character is no longer completely, completely neutral. He is kind of tipping towards lawful. It's mm, not great. Ooh, Tekken 7, eh? Sounds good. So uh, yeah, enjoy that. And cheers for uh, dropping by, and see you next time. Hmm. Anything interesting in this shop here? Probably can't afford anything. This shopkeeper is known for being greedy as heck. This scroll of Uncursing has been identified here from the shop. Awesome. Plus two plus one, that's not too bad. Right. Um, get rid of some stuff. Uh, how much does the Mithril Shield sell for? 57? No, that's clearly the better one then. How about the girdles? Leather girdle, 16 gold. 24 gold. Ah, that might be good then. Except it's not. It is only plus one and it's cursed, so that was shit. It's simply worth more because it's made of metal, I suppose. And the uh, leather girdle is a bit uh, more likely to be destroyed if you take like fire damage and such. I guess that's why it's worth less. Disastrous item such as a cursed girdle of weight or something like that. We can survive with a plus one girdle on for some time. Do I really want to lug around the head crossbow? No, I don't think so. We have uh, some arrows and a bunch of rocks. I think we will rely on those for ranged combat. Let's check those knives as well. Probably sell those. Yeah. Six 
step one for a crossbow. Uh, so let's. Slings. Our plus one plus one sling is worth seven gold. What about these? This one is worth twelve gold, so that's probably better. Well, it's plus zero plus one, but it was selling for more, so that's pretty much guaranteed to be a blessed sling then, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Sling is blessed or not, so we can just get rid of it, I think. Hmm. I think we want to keep most of the, most of the rest of the stuff here. The gem we can sell. One other important feature of this town is the Thieves' Guild, represented by this fellow here. You can teach us some very useful skills, if you are not lawful. If you're lawful, he won't deal with you. But our guy is neutral, so we can train with him, and he has now taught us how to pick pockets. Which we will <laughs> try to apply immediately. Uh, Pickpockets, like so. Let's try to empty that assassin's pocket. <laughs> if you um, complete uh, or successfully pickpocket a creature 20 times, then you are... Uh, then you can go back to the Thieves' Guild Master here and be accepted into the Thieves' Guild. Then you can train more useful skills. Such as, for example, uh, detect traps, disarm traps. So I'm um, actually thinking to stick around in this area for a bit longer before heading to the Caverns of Chaos. See if we can get that pickpocketing thingy done, because having trap detection would be really nice. Especially since we're uh, almost set to head to the pyramid, which is filled with traps. Trying over and over and over and over and over to pickpocket this guy here. We just learned that skill. So it is at one point. It's probably not going to be able to pickpocket anything. Until the skill increases a bit, but I'm I'm not entirely sure, but I think the pickpocket skill gets trained by applying it, even if it doesn't su succeed. So we'll see. Ah. Pickpocketing is a very useful way to get more loot, to be honest, uh, basically. Each monster can be pickpocketed once, and you will get a random item of uh, light weight, up to 10 stones from it. Typically like potions, scrolls, uh, daggers, some gold, things like that. But it is it will be an item uh, that will be generated in addition to what it might drop otherwise when it's killed. That's not bad at all. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, pickpocketing is uh, chaotic. Especially if you pickpocket a monster or NPC that is not hostile towards you, it can uh, quickly turn your alignment towards chaos. And although the wiki says that um, pickpocketing hostile enemies does not affect your alignment, I don't think that is completely true. I have uh, done this quest before, only pickpocketing hostile creatures and seen my alignment drop in the process. So I don't think that is entirely accurate anymore. Hey, you have cleaned out the rock drawer. <laughs> Success! We have been pickpocketing for so long that we are now hungry. This is probably the least exciting thing you could be watching on a stream, I guess. And I do apologize for that. It's just that having this done and learning the tech traps... Uh, it's kind of a big deal for this guy. No! Ogre Magi! Dangerous! Danger, danger! Alright. He turned invisible. He's standing right next to me, so I can kill it. Yay! It's dead. <laughs> That's true, Benjamin. The piety grind is also kind of tedious to, <laughs> to watch. Another thing that is just very beneficial to do, but not very exciting. You need to uh, watch out a little bit when you train pickpocketing like this, because the longer you do it, the more pissed off the monster becomes, it, it can seem like. Um, I think they can get like enraged or something, and they get like big uh, damage bonuses, or higher chance to punch through your armor or something like that. So you wanna watch out for that and just not auto pickpocket on autopilot for too long. Success. Cleaned it out. That is the second pickpocket. Success. Skills to still at one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, pickpockets increase plus two. Hey. <laughs> Now I'm in the infinite dungeon. Um, this is uh, like a completely randomized dungeon where all the floors get generated by random every time you go up and down the stairs. So if I go back to level 1 now, I will have a fresh dungeon floor and not the one I came from. Hey, 
it's a decent place to go to if, for example, like if you're a wizard and you need to find spell tooks, for example, or just try to do what I'm doing now. Train pickpocket or things like that. This guy is very protective of his pockets. <laughs> the old gunner. Just kill that quickly. They can be very annoying. Yeah. There are uh, quite a few different types of doppelgangers. They all do the same thing. Uh, when they attack you, you get confused because it looks like it's you or something. And then you can't reliably attack or cast spells or do anything while you're confused by them. They can be dangerous, like doppelganger lords and the stronger ones. If you meet those and other dangerous enemies at the same time, it can be disaster. Gunners are also completely immune to uh, missiles. Just remembered. So if you're uh, an archer, <laughs> doppelgangers can be especially painful if you don't have a decent uh, melee attack or if you have learned some good spells to kill it with. Oh, cleaned out. We have still to pickpocket anything useful. But, uh, we have a few successes now. out. Nice. Uh -huh. Another success. Then we can kill it. increases the success chances. Should be able to get this done. Ah, slime. I don't remember if all the ooze and slime monsters uh, have uh, the weapon destruction uh, trait. I know like the gelat gelatinous oozes for example don't, or the yellow ooze, they don't destroy your weapons, but there are many other types and i rather not take my chances when it comes to them, with uh, attacking them in melee. I 
also seems like some creatures are much trickier to pickpocket than others. Yeah, clean that. And obviously, you need to do it on a target that's, uh, that actually has pockets, like most or all even humanoid types. You can't pickpocket a cave lizard. Wise words of the day. Dangerous to practice pickpocketing on, but we'll try. He is definitely angry. Oh, we got hit. <laughs> Other uh, side effect of pickpocketing. Pickpocket training is that if you have a shield equipped, you also get a bunch of uh, marks in your shield training for free <laughs> while while trying to get into their pockets. Ah, swordsman. Just gonna kill that right away. bolted down and therefore I will loot it. Oh, another ogre, ogre magi, I think. Yeah, it's right here. Hit it. I think it... Ah, there, finally. I might be a little more scared of ogre magi than I need to be at this level, but uh, man, they are the bane of uh, like weaker characters. <laughs> if you run into one, you don't have very much toughness or you don't have any good spells, they uh, will kill uh, very many weaker characters. Ah, hate those guys. They have overpowered disarm chances. Feels like. No matter how skilled you are, they will always disarm your melee weapon and have you throw it somewhere else. Really rather annoying. And dangerous. Because they can hit pretty hard on their own and. Uh, into a dangerous creature alongside it. It's very bad. So dark rooms, I don't feel like crawling around in the dark. Hey! We stole a shimmering potion. Sweet. Nothing of 
value on the ghoul. Also, I think I lost count of how many successes I've had. Unfortunately, let's just say five or something for now. And I think it was 20 we need to do. Success. Six-ish. Hmm. Order success, that was quick. Success again. Did I get more skill increases? Oh yeah, I did 17. It's nice. And success. And another do list. Damn it. Ah. The chance to get disarmed by duelist and uh, swordsman and the like is based on your weapon skill. So, uh, with my six skill in pole arms, you would think I've had like at least a decent chance of not getting uh, disarmed. But, for example, Duelist has a very, very high chance, like a base chance, of doing it. It doesn't feel quite right, to be honest. going to pickpocket this one, we just need to kill it quickly. Or at least try to. If it hits us, we take corruption damage, which is awful. Mostly clear. I think we'll uh, start working our way back to the surface again, pickpocketing things as we go, and see if we can see if the quest is done then. If I had finished this pickpocketing quest and had trained detect traps, I would have uh, used that skill on the locked door to search it for traps before kicking it. It's like a great way to avoid randomly getting your face blown off in a fire fireball or having lots of gear destroyed. Also, there are some dungeon floors where you where you know that there's gonna be a whole bunch of traps. Sometimes, even in uh, predefined places. So, if you know the tech traps, then you can at least find them. And if you step on a tra trap that you have discovered, then you have a much bigger chance of not not triggering the trap. Even if you don't have like a skill to disarm the trap, so it's always useful.
door. I shall kick it. Is it me or is it a bit funny that you can continually try to snoop in a monster's pocket that is trying to kill you? I think that's a bit funny. <laughs> ah, there is a secret room on this level that is hiding the stairway. I'm pondering just um, going down and up again on the stairs instead of spending time searching for it. There's one of those oozes. Melee it safely. Just check if the room is here. No. Werewolf. What's in your pockets? Hmm. Should be here. I oh, found it. Oh! No! Door trap! We lost the sling. Let's check the other one. Oh, this one's pretty bad. At least it isn't cursed. Surprise! All bears do not have pockets. I have checked. Lizard man, I finished. Try. Orc scorcher pickpocket. Success. Circer. What's in there? His pocket. Ooh. <laughs> We stole the seed. Yay. We have the seed of the berserker. Uh. Purposes to lug around. Jackpot! Right, we killed the fire beetle and it left a corpse. Fire be beetle corpses will give you fire resistance if eaten. Although, I don't remember if the message I got, you suddenly feel very hot, if that is the you get fire resistance uh, message or if there needs to be a different one to apply the fire resistance. I should pro probably check that, but can't be bothered right now. Try to pickpocket a bit more, nothing of value. Seventy-five gold. I'll take it. And the wand. Floor two. Climb to floor one. And I think uh, if we're not done already, then uh, we must be very close to being at the uh, target for the pickpocket quest. Stole sling. Excellent. And we found some lumps of clay. Also excellent. Those are good missiles to use with the sling. I value another sling. Rat danger. 
with a weird rat in it, which we can pickpocket. Even though it doesn't look like it, it actually has pockets. I have checked. <laughs> Success. Weird rat corpse. That seems like an extremely bad idea to eat, but we'll carry it around for the food preservation training. Plus six pickpockets. 31 skill now. That's actually pretty good considering I haven't spent a single point in the actual skill on level up and it's gone from 1 to 31 just from uh, applying it. So that's good. Nothing of value. on the floor before we leave. That's why not. Let's eat that giant core. Giant rat. Go to the bandit or outlaw settlement as it's actually called. See if we have pickpocketed enough for the quest. Words? Well met. We need more men like ye. Welcome to our guild. Thank you. Now we can talk to him and he will perform training in climbing, disarm trap, detect trap and stealth. Oh. Let's see if we want to learn trap. 3500. We will happily pay that to learn detect traps. Excellent. This arm trap would cost how much exactly? 5,000. We don't have that kind of money right now. But it's something we can go back here and uh, learn later on when we're loaded with gold. Sure. Okay, 38. The horned helmet. I think we'll keep all these amulets. Oh no! I didn't consider that. The cursed metal girdle prevents us from removing body armor. I had forgotten that that was a thing. So, having cursed girdles on is actually pretty bad after all. Might be something nice. Could be a girdle of weight, but it could also be like carrying or strength or something good. It's worth 110, so that sounds like it's something beneficial. Definitely want to hang on to it. It's the weapons. The pickaxe, hatchet, those are useful tools. Uh, hatchet is only useful for bridge building. But you never know if I might actually have to go and build a bridge at some point, so it's worth keeping it, hanging on to it, in my opinion, just in case. Or putting one in storage uh, somewhere, place where you can go and pick, fetch one if you need it. Forty-nine gold for a scalpel. Oh. It's probably still shit. <laughs> Really bad stats, so we're just gonna sell it. Probably one of the other slings here is better. 16, eh? that's better. This is also better. Mm, 
Oh, sweet. Plus four damage. Uh, sling. Excellent. Let's the other one then. Check the price on the bow as well. 38. Probably safe to equip it. Tilda Skurgari, I think. Zelda Coral. Starting to pile up here. It would be great to find an altar soon to uh, drop the stuff on to at least see their item status. It's level 12. Quite a bit of XP to go for level 13. So I think what we'll do at this point is restock on food in the village here and then head to the Caverns of Chaos and try to get to the Dwarf Town and start doing the quests there. There is a quest that will teach literacy which we will definitely want to do as, uh, as soon as possible pretty much so we can start reading. Grab a whole bunch of food and buy it. of carriages. If we bless those, that would give us quite a bit of perception. Nice. Okay. So, uh, next plan now is to head to the west here, into the Caverns of Chaos. Currently undiscovered, but that's where we're going. There is also a pyramid which is at the end of the road here, which unlocks at uh, level 13, which is pretty soon. So I think those two are the immediate goals for the future for this character. However, I've been playing for a few hours straight now, so I think it's uh, time for me to take a break. So we're gonna save the game and uh, head on out of here. Cheers for uh, hanging out with me here on the stream. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Uh, if you like the stream, feel free to put, uh, click the follow button so you can see when I'm when I'm on. I play a variety of games: uh, Ancient Dominion of Mystery, some fighting games, uh, Borderlands, a bit, bit of everything. Well, not everything, but a good mix. So yeah, closing this down then, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.